Hello, and welcome to the TechBits YouTube channel. Today's video was developed on upon a request made by one of our viewers. This is for you, you know who you are, and we're glad to comply and help in any way possible. That is the whole spirit of this YouTube channel. That's it, let's get started. So we're gonna be talking about Postgres constraints today. Constraints are utilized to enforce with rules or conditions, the data stored in a table. The whole point of a constraint is to maintain data integrity and consistency. These are just a few of the principles a database should follow, such as atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability, ACID for short. Okay, so there's two types of constraints that we're gonna be discussing today. What they're covered, table, and column constraints. Let's start with table constraints. Table level constraints, they are applied to the entire table and can involve multiple columns. They are usually defined separately from the column definitions, usually at the end of the create table statement. Let's take a few examples here of what those could be. Unique, that we are following a basic syntax we explained on a previous video, primary key, foreign key, and check four in total for this example for the moment. So let's take a look at what unique example SQL query could be like. This is what it looks like. So we have the create table and the name, aptly named table unique constraint. We have the columns and here's a unique. As mentioned before, this one is a multiple column involved, but it could be a single one as well. There is no restriction upon that. The next one is the primary key constraint. The primary key constraint enforces uniqueness on a column or a combination of columns and ensures that they cannot contain null values. So for instance, here we have a, of course, named table primary key. Our primary key is called ID. It is a data type of serial. And of course, this is the primary key. It's going to make sure that it's unique. It's not going to repeat itself across anywhere in the table. The foreign key establishes a relationship between the current table and a reference table. It ensures that values in a specified column match values in the reference table's column, such as we can see here. We have the table orders, the serial primary key, and we see that it's referencing a table called customers and a customer ID column, indicating that this is the foreign key. Okay, that said, let's look at the last one here for table. It's a check. Check specifies a condition that must be satisfied for each row in the table. So for this table, it's going to verify that the column price is greater than zero and that the quantity is greater or equal to zero. That's the entire function that it's looking to achieve. Now we move into column constraints. Column constraints are applied directly to individual columns and are defined as part of the column definition. Let's look at a few examples that we have. Not null, unique, and check. Not null. An example would be whenever it ensures that a column cannot contain null values. We have the table name, and of course, here's the column. We're indicating that it's an integer and that it cannot be null. And the next one, column two, is a bar chart 50, also not null. Let's move on to unique constraint. It specifies that the values in the column must be unique across all rows in the table. As you can see here, we have our table name, the column, the data type, and indicating that it is unique. Last but not least is the check constraint again. This is what it looks like whenever you define it at the column level. We saw it before, check and just one column. Price is greater than zero. Of course, there's more co possible columns to be here. So bottom line, in conclusion, constraints, choose them appropriately, wisely. They should be based on your database design and on your specific and requirements 
designed for you. Now, the other part of it is we have column level constraints. Column level constraints provide more granular control over individual columns, but they can clutter the def column definitions if there are any constraints. The table level constraints, on the other hand, offer a cleaner separation of concerns and allow you to define constraints across multiple columns or even referencing other tables. That is the conclusion and the end of our video today. Hopefully, it comes in handy, and we're looking to forward to seeing you in the next videos. See you there. Thanks.